thank you very much, Dr. Wilburn uh, and Mrs. Licata. It's a real pleasure to be here. I appreciate, uh, I'm honored by being invited to uh, deliver this lecture. Uh, Dr. Wilburn uh, graciously said my latest book. I gotta confess, it's my only book. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I spent uh, 30 years, as he said, uh, going to Saudi Arabia, mostly um, as a reporter or foreign editor, talking to Saudi officials about oil, Iraq-Iran, Arab-Israeli, U.S.-Saudi, so geopolitical issues. And when I retired from the journal in 2006, the one thing I was really interested in doing with my newfound time uh, was trying to understand Saudi society. How did Saudis look at each other? What, what, what was the society like? How did they look at their rulers? How did they look at us? Um, and as I s speak about Saudi Arabia, everyone constantly asks me, why did you do that? Why did you spend uh, five years, month after month, uh, going there? Uh, dressed in my long black abaya. Um, my editor asked me that, actually, when I turned in the manuscript. She said, you know, why did you do this? And I said, because it's interesting. And she said, Paris is interesting. <laughs> so why did you do this? You know, make me understand. That was her only editing uh, point on the book. Um, so I will try to... Uh, make you understand why I found it uh, both <clears throat> fascinating and uh, important. Saudi Arabia is probably the strangest country you will never see. Um, it is so different from our own. Uh, a woman there never reaches the age of maturity. She is always under um, the control of some man. Um, she cannot go to her son's school. Uh, she cannot even see her son graduate. Um, uh, she obviously doesn't drive. We all know that. Uh, she doesn't appear in public without being um, covered. And... Uh, you know, in the worst situations, uh, she is simply a uh, chattel for a man to do as he wishes with. That's not the norm, I hasten to add, but it does happen. It's a very religiously uh, dominated society in which men obey Allah and women obey men. And Allah is distant and men are at hand. Um, it is probably less strange to me than it is to uh, most visitors because of my own uh, background. Um, like Matthew here, uh, who's from a little town in Alabama. I'm from a little town in Texas, 900 people with four churches, one blinking stoplight, and no movie theaters. So religion was what people did. Uh, everyone went to church, and my father was uh, far more conservative than the average person in the town. Um, we were not permitted to wear pants, shorts, no alcohol, no dancing, no musical instruments in our Church of Christ. Um, so uh, in, in lots of ways, uh, I was quite at home in the in Saudi Arabia. Um, I devoted uh, my time to trying to figure this country out precisely because I think it is the one Arab country that is truly strategic, not only because it is the world's largest exporter of oil, um, which sustains the Western way of life, but because Saudi Arabia I am convinced will be critical in the ultimate resolution of what is the proper Islam, which is going on now between the um, 
radical uh, jihadists, if you will, and the more modernizing uh, Muslims. And that very battle also goes on inside uh, uh, Saudi Arabia. Um, to try to understand the society, I knew that you it's like uh, someone coming here to write a book about America. You wouldn't be able to go to Washington and New York and claim to understand uh, America. So I had to be confident that I could get outside of Riyadh, their Washington, and Jeddah, their New York. Um, and I was uh, permitted to uh, over those uh, five years, I went uh, all over the country, and I saw all kinds of people, a lot of uh, the royal family, but also very poor people, men, women, young people, old people. Um, and it was uh, an advantage, frankly, to be a woman because you could talk to both men and women. A Western woman in Saudi Arabia is basically an honorary man. Um, so men are, most men are prepared to talk to you, even some of the senior religious officials who, of course, believe it is wrong to be in the presence of a woman uh, who's not your relative. Um, in the beginning, I had a one-month, uh, one-entry visa. Then I got a three-month um, visa, and then I was given a five-year multiple entry visa. And at that point, I came and went as I chose. I did not have to deal with a government uh, minder. Um, I would use a cell phone and a hired car from the hotel and call friends and get them to pass me to other people. So my goal was not to... Uh, prescribe what Saudi Arabia ought to be like, but to try to understand and describe um, what it was like. So I want to talk today first about some observations about Saudi society, and then second about what those observations might portend about its stability or vulnerability, and then lastly about uh, scenarios that uh, U.S. policymakers, uh, which may someday include some of you, uh, in the audience might uh, face. Um, Saudi society, this probably should not have surprised me, but it did. Um, it is much more diverse than we in the West think. Um, there are people who live quite Western lives inside their homes, and there are obviously people who seek to live a seventh century life. Um, it is also much more divided um, than I realize and much more dependent um, on uh, government because most people work for the government. Um, the divisions are quite deep, so it's not, in my view, really a country as much as it is a collection of tribes with a flag. And uh, it is divided by region, by religious sect, um, the majority are Sunni, but there are Shias, Sufis, Ismailis, divided by gender. Um, and people have a deep distrust of each other, so they don't really uh, mix much outside of their uh, family. So <clears throat> I'm going to show you my uh, version of, uh, of how I think the society functions. This is a Saudi, this little uh, figure here who is inside a family, who is inside a tribe, which is inside a country ruled by the religious establishment, and all of that is ruled by the royal family. And so it's a quite constricted, if you will, um, society the religious establishment legitimizes the rule of the Al Saud by giving them the good housekeeping seal of approval for their religiosity. Otherwise, the Al Saud would be just another tribe. Um, but 250 years ago, uh, one of the Al Sauds met up with a Mr. 
Ibn Abdul Wahhab, as in Wahhabism, 